this is Monday. Welcome back to another 30 day build video. And I've already been working in the bus a little bit. I didn't film any of that and I'm just gonna kinda walk you through what I did cause I have decided that I'm gonna do more focused videos. So instead of like filming a whole week of bed frame, plumbing, blah, 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 uh, I'm gonna do like bed frame. I'm gonna do plumbing. I'm gonna do electric. That way the videos could be used as like reference material for anybody that's getting ready to do their own build. I think it'd be easier to kind of, I don't know, we're gonna try it, see how it goes. What do you guys think? Should I just keep doing vlogs of the whole build week or should I break it down and make it more focused so they could be reference material for somebody else building? With that being said, today we're only gonna do a bed frame and I'm gonna talk you through how I do that. So I use two by threes to frame it, not two by fours. Uh, and then I use one by four slats to put slats on it, that's it. And then I use pocket holes and wood glue. I like to use HD pocket holes for the framing and then regular pocket holes that go down into the floor. You'll see all that. So let me know what you guys think. You want more focused videos like this or do you want to just see the whole build week? So let's pause right there and I'll show you what I did do this morning. Okay, welcome back to the inside of the bussy build. So the things that I did this morning is I pulled all these wires through back here because they were just hanging. And then I drilled a little hole here and I wrapped the wire, brought it over here, pulled these through. I'm gonna drop all the wire through here and do a little track for wire to go under the bus there. That took a while to figure out. Also, I've decided like this bus just had speakers in it, which is kind of cool. So I decided to like make the stereo system usable. Cause if you look over here, that's just an old like tape deck. No offense, but nobody uses those anymore. So I put new Kenwood speakers in there, 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 and over there. And I have a shop in Eugene going to put the deck in for me on Saturday. So you could connect your phone to it. It'll just make it usable. It's not going to be like a sound system that's going to blow your mind, but at least you could use it. So that's all the stuff I did this morning. Now we're going to get into the bed frame and I'm going to show you how I build those. So maybe you can do your thing. All right. So in the bussy build, I know if you guys watch the planning video, uh, we were going to do a full size bed which is like 54 by 75. Since I did the planning video and a lot of your guys' comments and how small the bus is inside, I decided to go with a three quarter size bed. It's 48 by 75. So it's a little, it's a couple inches thinner. I think two people can still sleep on there, uh, but it's just gonna save more room for a living area, which you're gonna spend more time in the living area than probably in the bed area, you know. We're going to build the bed frame 48 by 75. And one thing I do want to say is I see a lot of people when they do their bed frames, they're doing their two by threes like this. This is the weakest way for a two by three. You want to have your two by threes like this. It's stronger this way. So that's a very, very common build mistake I see in builds is people building like this and they should be building like this. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut two of these at 48 inches and do our lengthwise, do our, do our length thing. Also, we're just going to go double check and make sure uh, 75 will fit across there. I just lied. We're going to cut the 75s first. So we're going to cut two 75s. See how I just cut this wood and it's got like this like burr? So every time I cut wood, I just break the edge with 220 and then blow it off. Alright, 
just kind of broke it down with some 220, blow it off. And this board is this board is ready to uh, be put in her bed. I got the shop bay open, so I got some room to work. So here's our first 75 inch board right there. This is our second one. I'm gonna mark it and cut it. two more boards, 48 inches, minus an inch and a half on each side, which is three inches, uh, which is, oh my gosh, I'm looking really bad on camera right now. I'm looking really bad on camera right now, but I did it. I did all that to minus 48 minus three, which is 48 minus three, so 45 inches, so we need to cut two boards to 45 inches right here to give us our 48 inches across. If you're doing a different size bed, everything applies, your numbers will just be different, it's the same thing. Uh, the reason I like two by threes, they're lighter. I don't know if I said that earlier. So what did I just say? 45. We need two boards of 45, let's cut those. inch piece, the inch and a half on each side should be 48 inches wide. But I am Filipino, so you know, it could not work out. Boom! 48 inches on the money. Come check this out. Look at that. Bam! Let's cut another 45. And we're just gonna double check it for the cutting. I like to check everything so I don't mess stuff up. This should be 48. Bam, 48 on the money. So we're building the top of the bed frame and we're gonna do the legs. We're basically gonna build the whole top and then put it in there and then get our dimensions on the legs because you know, there's wheel wells and all kinds of stuff in the way, and we just want to make sure, you know, that we're not building this thing and then the wheel wells in the way, we gotta cut everything down. So we're just doing the top. Now I always like to put a center, a center beam in. So this should be 75 minus three, which is, I don't know, looks like 72, 72 inches. So we're gonna cut ourselves a beam of 72 inches and do a center beam. All right, so here's our center beam. Bam. That's how it's gonna go, like so. And I wanna put it in the center. So half of 48 is 24. So we're just gonna mark it. 24 is right here. Put it on this side. And I'm gonna mark inch and a half. Uh, well, no. Inch and a half divided by two is what? The answer is three quarter. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a mark at three quarter on each tip. So that way I can line these up and you'll, the, the marks will line up for center.
Okay, so that right there is the top of our bed frame without the slats and they're gonna go across it. Now, we're gonna pocket hole this all together. So when you pull all these boards apart, it can get confusing on where the pocket holes go. So I always like to go in and mark with a pencil where I'm gonna pocket hole. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to connect these boards right here. So I'm gonna put a pocket there. Pocket there, I'll connect it here, here, and then I'll alternate to the other side. Pocket it here, here. This way, when I get the, uh, the boards over there, I don't get confused on uh, where the pockets go. As you know, you can do that. You put them on the wrong side, you gotta cut more stuff. That's not fun. So that's it. Bam. I like to use, let me show you. So when you're putting inch and a quarter together, um, or inch and a half stuff, you wanna use a two and a quarter. I like to use Craig HD screws to put any one inch and a half material together, like two by threes. And then I'll use these little guys to go down into the floor. So, but that's all on the legs, so that doesn't matter right now. So I'm gonna put the Craig HD bit together on that jig, and we're gonna pocket hole this whole frame. HD, made for heavy duty, baby. You know that bed needs to be heavy duty. You don't need an HD bit. I just like to, because it's more expensive, you can just do it with a regular Craig jig, but I personally like to. I think it just, you know, gives it a little more strength, which is not bad. Uh, so the way you set these up is if you had a regular Craig jig, whatever your material size is, you see it here, you would put this point at that material size, and then you would put your ring on and tighten it down. This is made for just inch and a half stuff, so, you know, it just goes right in. So we're gonna tighten this collar down, and we're gonna do a test piece, just to make sure we're all good. Okay, this is a piece of scrap right here. We are just gonna do two test, test holes, just to make sure this is working right. And we are going to set the jig up. All right, here we go. All right, there's our HD uh, pocket holes. I always like to leave my crank, my jig bits over here so I don't lose them. And uh, I'm gonna bring some screws back and we'll put them through here and we'll see how this works. Okay, again, we're using the Craig Jig Pocket Hole HD two and a halfs to put two by threes together. You also use this to put any inch and a half material together. Uh, two by two, two by four, whatever. Because two bys aren't actually two inches, they're inch and a half, which is really dumb. But it is what it is. Come on, open up. So we're doing a test, just going to pop this through here, whoa bro, come on man. And is that going to go through? Boom, 
That's money. So, our jig's all set up so we can start pocket holing all that stuff. We're gonna use our little marks to put our holes where they need to go. Okay, our bed frame, top of the bed frame has been all pocket holed, and now we're gonna put it all together. So one thing I like to do as well is I, by hand, I'll use this, and I will go ahead and put all the screws in right now. I call it like a pre-screw, and I'll show you up close what that looks like. So this is the bit for the, the HD. I put the screw in there like that, and I feel it by hand and then start it because you can feel it a lot better by hand than by a drill. So I'll go ahead and go around all these and I'll put the screws in by hand before I blast it through. tip in the drill. One of the tricks is to, with pocket holes or any screws that you're putting in wood, is I like to turn it down. My speed on my drill all the way down and I like to turn the torque all the way down. So you just, and you never just use, I don't like to just use screws. I'm going to put wood glue on each end and then I'm going to tack it together with the pocket, pocket screws. And you don't want to bore it out at the end. You want to get it to suck it up, tighten up, let the glue do its job, and then that's good. Don't sit there and just blast it out at the end or you're gonna strip it. All right, we're gonna do a close-up of one end so you can see it. Now we're gonna put glue on the end. Let's see, it's gonna be hard to do it at this angle for you, but I'm gonna do my best. So I'm putting glue on the wood. And then I'm gonna line it up right there. Now I'm gonna tack it, tack it together. So check my check my line up here. Bam. Let's put it together. I'm gonna have to turn the torque up. I'm gonna have to turn the torque up more. There we go, that is strong. With the wood glue and those HD pocket holes, that's gonna be super strong. So let's put the rest of this together. Top of the frame is all put together. Wood glued and pocket uh, hole heavy duty. Heavy duty pocket hold with two quarter inch heavy duty screws. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the bed frame in, in the bus and kind of get an idea dimension wise how tall we wanna have it and then measure what we're gonna need our legs to be. Ok, 
guy. So it's definitely gonna hit those. Let me show you something. Remember how I was telling you I didn't want to necessarily cut all four sides here because it's going to be in the back one side and then it's going to sit up on these wheel wells on another. I want to have the mattress sit about here off of this frame, right? So it's going to have three quarter inches up on that. Now, I'm only putting a four inch mattress in here. Uh, so I'm going to measure off the back, see how high that is. I think I'm going to leave enough room for somebody to put an 8 inch if they end up wanting a different mattress. And I also want to be able to put a propane tank, a uh, full, like a regular size propane tank underneath the bed. I think it's just a good measure of, uh, of how high I want it. So I'm going to figure out how high I want this bed right now. Okay. So, if I have an 8 inch mattress, oh, it takes it to there. Is that 19? So, if I do 19 inches, so propane tank is 19 inches. So, if I do 20, that adds 3 inches to there, 3 quarter to there. 4 inch mattress will be there, 8 inch will just be above. So, it's not going to be an exact science, but I'm going to make the, uh, the clearance underneath the bed 20 inches. So propane tank, and that'll leave me with enough, enough room here to stuff stuff under there. So it's going to be 20 inches high for storage underneath. So 20 minus 3, how tall are these? Six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. So the back are going to be 20, 20 inches, and then the fronts are going to be six and a quarter, or 20 inches minus six and a quarter to sit up on this. Okay, so now we're at kind of a crossroads, right? I'm, I use the Craig Jig HD anytime I'm putting uh, one and a half inch material together, like that. Two by twos, two by threes, two by blah, 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 right? Now, with that being said, all these legs we just made are only hitting two by material all on the tops. So I'm only gonna, I'm only going to HD pocket hole these all on the tops, right? Now, for these little legs that are sitting on the wheel wells, I'm not going to put pocket holes down above this, the tires. I doubt it'll ever bottom out on the bottom of that, but I don't want screws sticking through there, right? So I'm just going to use L brackets and smaller screws to mount these down to the ground on the front, right? Um, on the back, I'm going to HD pocket hole the tops to connect to the 2x and then I'm going to put regular pocket holes to just put regular pocket screws down into the floor. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? So you might need to rewind, listen again, I'm not sure, but I'm only using HD pockets to connect 2x two two material together. The bottom of this leg is going to 3 quarter inch plywood, right? So that means that I'm going to use a three quarter inch pocket hole. It's smaller pocket holes for the bottom to attach to the ply. So we'll just do it and then you'll see what I'm talking about.
Taking the HD setup out. Putting the regular pocket hole setup back. So as you can see, this is your board thickness, right? Now we're going into three quarter board. So we're gonna set it at three quarter right there. And then we got to adjust, we need to adjust our depth here. So we're gonna go to three quarter, and I like to pull it back just a little bit, just so I don't go through my material. Give myself a little, a little insurance. Bam, now we're ready to pocket hole the bottom. All right, so the two tall ones, oh, I need a drill, are the ones that are going into the, uh, into the floor, which is my three quarter inch ply. So we're gonna pocket hole the two tall ones Okay, we're gonna use inch and a quarter Craig screws for to go into three quarter material. So I'm gonna put these in by hand like we did last time. So we're just gonna get the legs attached to the frame and we'll go in and put the L brackets on the fronts after because we just need it to stand up for now. So let's go get the legs on that frame. All right, y'all. <laughs> so, I think what we're gonna do is just kind of set set it up so you can kind of see it. And oh man, it's gonna be difficult. Um, I might try and get some wood clamps. Try and hold that in place. I'm just trying to get the wood clamps just to help me hold it all together when I start putting it together. I don't know if this is gonna work out, bro. Um, Bro, how'd you do it like this? You should do it like this. So.
Oh, if you can see this, I'm going to put it like this so I can brace both 2 bys. So if you see, I'm, instead of doing it like this, only supporting one, I'm going to put it like this so that this will support the weight of this seam. Okay, let's try and uh, turn this over and around. Aha! Look at that! gonna shut the door make sure we got clearance on that okay so now we're gonna take the tape measure and we're gonna even this out uh, we can do a few things we can put it all to one side or we could even it out let's see what we think I think we're gonna even it out just to give room for like the mattress and stuff to play around. So that's three and a half. It's three, so let's make that three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Not three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Okay, what is it, tape ran or something? So three inches. Three inches. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. That's weird, three and a quarter up here. Three inches back here. Three. And how do we feel about that? I think I, I think I like having that little bit of room right there. Four inch mattress, take us to here. An eight inch will take us to about there. So it's pretty good. I like that. All right, let's uh, let's tack it in. All right, we're gonna switch this Craig bit out for the regular bit. Ugh. Now, we're gonna try and straighten this out with a square. Oh, we messed that all up, bro. So, let's, uh, let's go remeasure it. So a lot of people don't know how to Attach stuff down to the floor. That's how you do it. Pocket holes, baby. We're using this T-square to try and straighten that leg up as much as we can. Remember how we said we didn't pocket hole these ones because that's the wheel well and I just I don't know those ones I don't know I just wanted to use these here I could have probably did the pocket holes there but I just did these as like a safety measure so whatever I just I don't like to play I don't know what's on the wheel well I don't know if it's half inch I don't know if it's three quarter so playing it safe with the L brackets right there
that's metal. That is metal. So that is not, it's not wood. That is why we did not pocket hole that. Okay, we gotta go get some metal self-tapping screws. Uh, that's why I didn't wanna mess with the wheel well stuff because I didn't know what it was. Three quarter, half inch. As soon as we started screwing into it, we found out that it was metal. So we're gonna use these flathead five eighths self-tapping metal screws and then get, those, get that front end tacked in. Okay, there's the skeleton of the frame. As you can tell, it's a little, little wobbly. So we're just gonna cut a couple two by threes and brace it up. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just made four more legs with the inch and a quarter pockets and the three quarter pockets for the floor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put studs, bank, bank, uh, just to give it a little more support towards the center. And that should be enough. And then we'll get the bed slats on and we'll call that done. So that's what we're up to. Let's do it. Okay, I put the back legs in, but I decided to take out the front. The reason I decided to take out the front is because I'm going to be building cabinets that I'm going to attach to it and I can screw to it that'll strengthen it up and then I could just put those feet in later depending on where those land. So if I need those, I'll put those in later. But now we're going to get the slats going. Okay, so I like to use 1x4s for the bed slats. And those are the 1x4s right there. If I remember right, uh, I should be able to get two 48-inch pieces out of that. Oh, wait. That's not it. That's the bed slats right there. So I should be able to cut that in half, get two 48-inch pieces, cover that so I'm gonna split all them one by fours and then we'll go in and put them in Okay, so we're about to start putting the slats on. I always like to pre-drill my holes when I can and then blast them through. It's inch and a quarter spacks. 
I really like spack screws from Home Depot. And the way we'll do this is uh, I'll put one in between as the space and then screw the next one in, space, space, space. You'll kind of see. Let's get into it. All right, let's line this one up. Feels pretty lined up to me. Bam, let's blast it. Let's bring our screws over here. So I'm gonna start in one corner, like so. Screw in it. Bam. And then we'll do the other side to keep it from moving. the rest of it. No, I'll just put one in the center. Grab another slot. So as you can see, I'm gonna use this one as a spacer. And I'm gonna line this one up with that. And then I'm gonna blast it. All right, everybody, that's it. That's how I make a bed frame uh, out of two by three and one by fours. You can use this same design for any bus or, uh, or van, any size or dimension. Everything I showed you today will apply to that. I hope you guys learned something today. This is how I've been doing it in all my buses for a long time, which brings me to another point. You have to slap your bed. In my van, I didn't slap my bed, and I just used a piece of plywood. And the problem is there's no, there's no air, there's no way for moisture to escape between your mattress and the plywood, and it creates mold in the wood. It's not good. All you gotta do is slap your bed. And I've seen it so many times on Instagram. I'll see somebody put plywood down as their bed frame, or as their, their bed platform, and then three months later, you see him taking hole saws to it, trying to get it to vent. I did the same thing. The hole saws didn't work. It still created mold. I ended up having to cut slats out in the plywood to actually fix it. So, tip, slat your bed. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is also day 10 of the 30-day short bus build. 
Uh, this is Monday. We just got back from our weekend. You didn't say you didn't see Jaylena today because she's not feeling good. She's just resting today. So that's the end of the work day today. We got a bed frame in, and I'll see you in the next one. And let me know what you guys think about this. Do you want me to do a full week of building and just kind of show you what's going on, or do you want me to break it down more like this, tutorial style, and try and teach you each step? So tomorrow we're going to get into kitchen cabinets and drawers. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys prefer. I think I might actually like this better because, you know, it's something that can be referenced for somebody. They can just pull this video up, watch it a couple times, and pretty much know how to make a bed frame. So we'll see you guys in the next video. If you like bus building or you like bus life adventures, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Hit that little notification bell. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. I forgot to tell you guys something. And with this being a bed frame tutorial, I feel like I need to tell you. That is raw wood. You should always, should always seal your wood. It just, it helps protect it from moisture, mold, just a good habit to get into. I like to use Danish oil. It's just easy. You wipe it on, boom, done. That's what I'm going to do with this wood. I'm just going to brush on some Danish oil, call it a day, keep moving forward. You can also paint it. Paint also seals your wood. So that's how you build your bed frame. At this point, you could paint it to match the rest of your build out, or you could just oil it, call it done, and then move on with the rest of your build. So always seal your wood up. Now we're done.